All right. You, you all set there, Pika? Now we're rolling. I told you. I'm not going to put you out there on TV land looking, you know, half past the monkey's ass, if you know what I mean. You and your rock star lifestyle. He writes the show notes. I'm just the talent and read what he writes. That's the executive producer, a Pikachu. And then we have the studio audience, the Canadian bear, you know, pre-recorded before a lot, before a live studio audience of my stuffed animals. And uh, welcome from our Boston studios, which is down the street from the corner. Formerly known as the Comics Coffee Table and the 365 Days of the Golden Age of DC Comics Daily Show. We've been talking about comic books for years now. Huzzah and welcome to New Comic Book Day. Usually on a Wednesday, DC Comics does and a few other smaller presses. I guess it's dependent upon the arrangement. And the distributor, perhaps, maybe if there's a uh, if there's a, an actual comic book store owner out there in the chat and the discussion, maybe you can let us know. Um, maybe I should have you on the show. Put that we could put that down. We have to invite Yul Carter on the show one of these days. That would be fun. We're gonna we have uh, you know parallel shows. There's a there's a group of us comic book YouTubers. Uh, we, we're all kind of united by Wes at Thinking Critical and his Comics Aficionado Saturday panel show because uh, we're co-panelists a lot of the times. And we share an interesting space in comic book fandom. We're all of a certain age. I'm thinking about, you know, Wes, Perch, you know, the usual suspects, even Richard Meyer. Uh, but myself, Yul Carter, Gray from Wakazashi's Tea House, you know, Wes from Thinking Critical and, you know, this whole sphere, I don't know, you know, and I, I feel like, wow, do, uh, how many overly positive voices do we actually listen to? And, and especially when it comes to what we know as fandom and it's what we know is the expectation. Are we getting our money's worth? You know, what matters? What matters most? Well, for me, what matters most being a comics fan is um, fun. And the kind of sport in this, in a way, for me, it, it's a little bit of a comp. There's a little bit of a competition, I guess, with oneself. It's like golf. You know, you can play against others, but you're playing usually against the, the scoreboard, the par, and the, the course itself. And um, that's how I approach floppies. I love floppies. I am a Bronze Age baby. I've been on this planet over a half century now, and most of that time I've had my nose and buried into a funny book, a floppy of it, and, you know, like, huh? What? That's me. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? You weren't paying attention? I'm obviously reading a funny book, and you're asking me, of all people, if I was paying attention. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> Thank you so very much for tuning in, everyone. It's new release Wednesday where we um, peruse the shelves. Peruse actually means to look at something very deeply. You know, we've kind of lost the meaning of that succinct word. Uh, when you say peruse, you presume that you just flip by and scan things wicked quickly. No, no, no. Peruse is the antonym of that. Write that one down. It's a good one. Uh, we have how many comic books? How many funny books are there today to preview? That's right. I sound like Franz Schubert. Who's Franz Schubert, you're asking? How dare you? How dare you? Hooray for the life of a shoe. Three cheers for Padio Tree. Um, that's from uh, the Brack album. If you know Brack, these are like 30 year old, 25, 30 year old pop culture references, you know, like old episodes of The Simpsons. Gone like dust in the wind. Dust, wind. Dude! <laughs> 
<laughs> Socrates, yes. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That makes eighty plus six. Here we got eighty-six different floppies that are solicited for the shelves for this particular week for comic books at your local comic book shop. We make a big deal of our local comic book shop here. It's where we get these, these ubiquitous brown paper bag, flat bags filled with funny books weekly. I approve of this. I, I love my comic book shop. My local comic book shop. Uh, I'm getting a pull list for the first time in over 20 years. Um, it just, um, I have mixed feelings about it. We'll talk about that some more too. Um, is that on the pull? Is that on the show list? Is that part of the show notes, Pika? Talk about your pull list because I have to put my, my, my paperwork in today. And so I don't, you know, I'll find out all the details as we go along. All right. Like, you know, but am I going to miss Ultimate Spider Man number two today? Because I get to the local comic book shop an hour later. Um, you might remember the show used to be daily and we had to cut back to two episodes a week. Well, also we had to like, you know, it's, it's that was part of my work life balance and part of that work life balance too are my hours at work. So I go in an hour later and leave an hour later. That means on Wednesdays on new release day, I'm getting there about 4 PM instead of 3 PM. There's a heck of a lot of difference because we miss a lot of things on the new release shelf. And that's not the owner's problems for under ordering. We have to have sympathy and solidarity with the owners and, and, and the proprietors of these local comic book shops. They are independent bookstores. They are. And um, we're going to talk about the pull list and my feelings about it. At the end of the show, uh, give us something to look forward to. But before that, we're going to go to leagueofcomicgeeks.com slash comics slash new hyphen comics. That is the URL, the universal resource locator in the HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol and your HTML, your hypertext markup language. Isn't it nice to know? And remember, it's all coding. Never look behind the, you look behind the hood of these websites. Look at the source code. You can. It's there. It's a right click away. You know, gee. Why not? I've also got, um, it's a week later. And I'm benefit. I'm now benefiting from Valentine's Day. Half price chocolate. <laughs> it's Peter. They're, they're Reese's cups. Heart. I can break them and then eat them. Who knew? Who knew that hearts were full of peanut butter? That they were full of blood and love and hope. <laughs> ah, evil. <laughs> yes. Maybe talk about X Men ninety seven a little more. You know, we had a great conversation on Sunday about morph and about morph's nature, and about how this character may or may not fit into modernity, or how may. Old fans may not be, maybe it's the old fans turn to not fit into the modernity. Yeah, we talked about that on Sunday. So go back and see the Sunday sh uh, show and uh, tell me what you think about my ideas on Morph. Um, we're blessed and grateful that someone brought up Odo from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I'm a big Deep Space Nine fan. Am I? You see all this Trek stuff? You see this Deep Space Nine? Am I a Deep Space Nine fan? <laughs> Eagle must rule. So, um, yeah, but I'm wearing my safe space shirt, which is a gag. It's a it's it's a play on Star Wars. That progressive modernity, postmodern values, and you know the, the coddling of society. Like you can't have Star Wars anymore, so you need a safe space kathleen kennedy safe space lucas films safe space 
do. Oh gosh, that's so terrible. Don't do that to the people. Don't do that. We have comic books to look at. Let's let's bring up that uh roll, that beautiful bean footage. Let's uh, share those screens, the new comics this week. Indeed, here we are at St. Alfonso's Pancake Breakfast, where I stole the margarine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And it alone, the bingo cards. And do, 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 do. I saw a handsome parish lady make her entrance like a queen. Ooh, do, 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 do. Some Frank Zappa for your face. All right, let's take a little peek at what we've got today. As always, I like to start at the bottom of the list, work a little way up. And because you could be like, you know, unaware of some like real gems or potential gems, you know, you never know. Um, they could be just like a, something may catch your eye. It could be the, the title. It could be the cover art. You know, hey, cover art is a great way to pull somebody in. Look, this Rick and Morty finals week. She, Rick, Holmes, and Mortson number one. I'm not a Rick and Morty fan. I've never watched this show. I don't know its sense of humor. I know it permeates uh, nerd culture and geek culture. It's about a mad scientist and his grandson who time travel. Uh, is that like the, the, the gist of it? And like hilarity ensues. And it has that specific art style as well. <clears throat> so, uh, oh. yeah, but I've never watched an episode. I, I, I don't know what the hullabaloo is about. I know it's it's supposed to be geeky. I guess it works geeky too. And it's really like, it, it's where irreverence went. It's where satire went. It's where cruel humor went. There's a lot of cruelty in humor. People can't stand cruelty. So, I mean, lots of humor has been, there's an attempt at trying to get humor to be like, you know, uh, you know, curated somehow. Try that real quick. Yeah, that's better. Here we go. So you can see my safe space. Come to Reverend Sully's safe space. It's an oasis for abused and used Star Wars veterans. A home away from home, away from home in a galaxy far, far away. Reverend Sully's safe space. Four Susas. Of both sides are welcome here. Because there is no such thing as a great Jedi. <laughs> That's my two cents. I don't know. I don't great Jedi. Hmm. Exactly. What else? <clears throat> Oni, but that was on Oni Press. And this is on no Oni Press has Cemetery Kids Don't Die number one, four ninety-nine. I thought Oni Press was like in trouble. Oni Press also has invasive. Number three coming out. We got three from Oni Press. Maybe like this is, uh, oh, well, look at this now. All right. This is something I could and should take a, take a, take a bite out of. I love cheesecake. I love a well-drawn Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Dynamite has these really interesting properties and usually ch good cheesecake kind of covers cheesecake is a style of art or photography that accentuates the female form femininity allure titillation and um play you know and can play on themes it's it's it, and it can it's it cheesecake should be very well intended cheesecake you know what i mean I, I, that that's the gist of it too cheesecake was of an antediluvian age where there were more, uh, dare I say, um, moral gatekeepers, you know. So, hey, we live in the age of the hub. How can you get? It's like they said in the Big Lebowski. How can you keep her at the farm when she sees when she's seen Carl Hungus? Uh, but that, that's you know. Here we got Valiant 
Man, Exo Man of War Unconquered Prestige Edition. Now, this is from um, this is from Alien Books. You can see so right so it's on the trade dress uh, right there. After Becky, you <laughs> Clunin, and uh, but the other two creators didn't block me on Twitter for adjacency. Um, I should be more fair, and I should be more fair to to Eric. And to, to Exo Man of War, a, a title I've traditionally and historically, li you know, liked and appreciated. Okay. And um, all right, let's go to the top of the list. Let's do this. Do it. Let's do it. Touch me, baby. Drive me crazy. Touch me all night long. Make me love you. Kiss and hug you. Lunch me. All night long. Oh, 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 let's do it. Oh, 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 wow. All right. Exactly. This week, will I get what I want? I'm putting in. I'm putting in a poll list for the the essentials. Uh, I'm gonna. I've been reading this weekly. It's Batman 144, written by Chip Sadarsky. Really interesting art, though. I mean, like, let's. Um, and how many? Okay, you can go away now. Advertisement, go away now. You're in the way. Um, we've got we've got four variant covers. They're all nice looking. I mean, Mateo Scalera. Um, yeah, so yeah, there are five covers all together, and. It just flips around in time. There are like three distinct time frames. Okay, this is 499, 40 pages. Um, and it's a Joker story. And it's like it's kind of set in the in the new 52's mind space of zero year. Or just right after that. So it's in like it's in the new 52 Batman year one, which is not the Machizelli Miller. Batman year one far from it because Batman has a different costume. It's more textured. It's got this ribbing on the legs and on the sleeves uh, of his bat, of his, you know, of his bat suit. And there are purple tones to, to, um, to parts of it. And, um, that came all came out of zero year. So, um, so this is all post dark Knight's death metal and infinite frontier and dark crisis which is far far removed almost hey it's eight, eight years now since rebirth and they've had how many reboot events yes dc continuity is a mess so why you know it's not about why it's just about this is just the story you pitched and you got green lit and it's uh but like literally which joker if there are three jokers which joker I, I have a heart i can't i'm reading this and i can't follow this and um yeah it, it's it's hard it's it but some darn beautiful art in there like that last issue 143 had two of my favorite panels almost this year and batman it just uh it just, it just looked wonderful okay let's get back to action as they say as they say on the uh, on the Power Rangers, there we got Nightwing one eleven <clears throat> for four ninety nine, and um, Donna DC trade dress. There we go, and that's it's got to be a Bruno Redondo cover. Um, yep, you can tell just by the the form, and goes for like iconic values. I like that a lot, and it's just heavy on the screen tone filters though. You can tell, but that's some kind of exaggerated comic book iconic look is the texture of bend day dots and and screen tone fill and screen tone zip tone filters and um so um yeah what's what what's with what, nightwing this is uh 40 pages 4.99 and tom taylor is coming off of of Nightwing, we have. Oh, look at this! We have the sweater weather variant cover uh, with Nightwing. You know, but that's okay. I mean, we have cheese. That is cheesecake. That's cheesecake for girls and gays, and that's fine. You know what I mean? That's called equal opportunity stuff. He's not making an angel in the snow. He's making a Nightwing logo. Isn't that cute? 
you know, and just Dick Grayson. He is the the apex. He's like David, Michelangelo's David of the DC universe. He's like <clears throat> everything right. He was raised by Batman, but he's a very nice person instead, you know. So he's just as smart as, um, and he's got the you know the physique, the conditioning. The, he, he's dedicated. He's loyal. He's like he's you know that's Dick Grayson for you. Yeah. So um, there's one incentive cover, which is a one in twenty five. And um, there you go. It's, it's, it's a regular issue 111, and you have four variant covers. That's that's comic books. These da, da, da. then that's comics. This is the one I'm afraid I'll miss today is Ultimate Spider Man number two. Um, this has how many variant covers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight nine, because you have to count virgins as separate. Yeah, you, you have to. I mean, that's just a patriarchal thing that we all grew up knowing. You know, Durr. Sheesh. <laughs> and and this, these, those are the these are the Parker kids, May Parker and Richard Parker, and they're they're uh, they gingers just like their mother. Mary Jane Watson is married. To Peter Parker, and oh look, it's a it, look, it's a spoiler. Harry Osborn, Green Goblin, of course. I, yeah, I that's because we had a mystery going on. Like, who is the Green Goblin? You know, and this is where I say like solicitation culture is like the root of spoiler culture, especially in comic books. You cannot keep anyone's mouth shut three months before an event it's kind of like you already read it and you hadn't gotten to it yet you've read the tv guide um explanation of it and you know and it's kind of like the grandfather's logic in in 1987's uh joel schumacher's the lost boys the vampire movie the grandpa's got he gets tv guide in the mail and the kids are like where's the tv grandpa and he's like well you read tv guide you don't need a tv it's like pre wiki culture, kind of. You got spoiler art, spoiler, you know. I've been spoiling so much shit because just because of solicitation culture. It's like for me, that's like one of the worst parts about being a comic book fan is that open door that, that this, 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 this swinging, like, you know, saloon door it swings both ways. That, like, of, of just the sheer amount of spoilers where uh, revelation keeps us going in the serialized format and um batman superman's world's finest number 24 by mark wade and dan mora is back uh this concludes the return to kingdom come storyline 399 32 pages um and that's two years of mark wade doing this really interesting uh well accepted until recently <clears throat> what's that mean well mark wade mark wade is the thematic opposite to ethan van skyver when it comes to culture the so-called culture war um you know i'm not saying it's not there i'm just saying it's so called hey they take it as you weigh man uh <laughs> We've got three covers here. We got uh, two incentive covers, like a a, a one in fifty Sweeney Boo cardstock variant cover for an issue twenty four, which isn't a key issue. Probably we still have the Dawn of DC trade dress, huh? You see that? So that just went away for one month. And they heard that, like I noticed, and so like they put it immediately back on. So DC Comics, you know, they're listening to me. All right. They're listening to me. We got Superman number 11, which I'm going to pick up if it's there, because I've been buying Superman. Um, actually got a really nice Superman. See, I missed Superman 10 last week, so that's got to go on the list, too. I have to make a poll list. And I guess I also have to curate it, too, because I'm fickle. I, I follow writers. And so I'm going to be like, you know, I, like how much... 
room do you have to, to be holographic? Like I, I've been buying action comics. Now I've put it down because just it's not because I dislike Jason Aaron because I don't care about a bizarro story. And I feel like, hey, I, I follow Philip Kennedy Johnson. Maybe I should be picking up Green Lantern War Journal instead. Wow. We've got five, six variant covers, two really nice incentive color co covers. Um, these are really nice. Yeah. And, um, and I've been, I've been, I've been reading this and it's been good storytelling. It's like Joshua Williamson, good use of the action figures. Nothing much to that. Really. It's, it's, um, he's got some new villains that he brought in. Good. We need that. Let's see. We got Titans number eight. This is immediately following the events of Beast World. Keep your eye on Raven, please. No spoilers. Oh, no. This is actually an epilogue. This is issue 21 of 22 listed in Beast World. See, you can see that right there, right? Like right, right here. You see my, my, my cursor moving? This is part of the Beast World's event. It's an epilogue. It's number 21 of 22. It's $3.99 for 32 pages. Written by Tom Taylor. And... Um, the Titans are not the same heroes they were when Beast World began. Oh, and this one has one, two, three, four, five variant covers for an issue eight and an epilogue of this. But it has a really nice sweater weather variant cover here. Once again, we'll uh, like, you know, let's check out not just, you know, Dick Grayson's physique and, you know, and his cheesecake, but we get some coriander cheesecake, which is great. Because, you know, see it again. No, thank you. And again, no, thank you. Once was enough. You know? And um, it was an interesting movie. I'm glad I watched it. It was a cultural phenomenon. Uh, X-Force. To see everything in the X-Men universe is wrapping up. Uh, this is written by Ben Percy. Inter and this, Oh, yeah. This is... So, actually, X-Force 48 was really good. I've been I've been blessed to have been following all the X Men titles for for months now, um, sp basically a couple of months, and it's like right after the Krakoan era, you know the fall. So I've got to see Fall of X, and now I'm getting into the Fall of the House of X, which by Jerry Duggan, which for me that was my pick of the week week last week. It's that that's the I think that's the real X-Men title. And we have lots of, you know, spinoffs. But this is going for some nostalgia stuff for me, like of my Bronze Age babiness. My, you know, these could be like Bronze Age Pampas, you know, or baby foods. But it's teaming up Wonder Man and Beast. And these two were Avengers together, and it's the Blue Beast, and it's not the it's not the it's not the Cat Beast, it's not the Dark Beast. This is a Krakoan uh, clone, uh, you know, but based on a, a younger Beast when he was with the Defenders and the Avengers, and he was and he was pretty much he was really into mutant activism at the time too, and he was canonically. Um, so that the, we've always had hints of and, and notes of that. In comics, especially in Marvel comics, which tried to, you know, uh, Marvel really did it on purpose, tried to mirror the real world in a way and use allegory and, and storytelling to, to diffuse feelings and, tell, and to disseminate information in the pre-internet age, you know, <clears throat> 3 dollars 28 pages. So that's going to be 20 pages of story and art, but um and this is still Fall of X. So I wonder if all of this takes place before Fall of the House of X. Because that's when, like, different team members and, like, look at this. You got Quentin Choir and, like, all of these people are still, all of these people are in Wolverine, Sabretooth War as well. So it's like, <laughs> but that's comic book magic. That That's it's in the comic book convolution. And we accept that on face value like it there is no use splitting hairs and arguing being like well how can wolverine be in four places at a, at a time he's imaginary and he's ex 
Wolverine was is like a cipher. He need he's anything story needs him to be and where he needs to be in order to help resolve the story with uh, the added flavor of what you like. Wolverine, you put Logan in anything and you know, you get, you know, Wolverine in stories. Yeah. <laughs> we got Tom King's wonder woman. Number six, uh, nice cover. Great art by Daniel Sampere. 499, 40 pages. So, and we've got how many variant covers? We got one, two, three, Four, five, four. We have one, two, three, four, and five, six. I like the black and white variant cover. It's very, you know, it's of this, you know. It's really nice. Wonder Woman's been a mixed bag. I'm not a Tom King fan. Uh, ooh. See, Hulk number nine is coming up this week. Daredevil number six. Now, see, this is a wonderful John Ramuda Jr. cover, but it's when the on the inside that counts. And um, it's, yeah, I've been kind of, yeah, I've been keeping, oh, wow, look, 499, Spawn 350. Record breaking 350th issue. Look at that beautiful, like, friends, Frazetta inspired cover in a way. Like, behold the trans the triangulation, the golden zone in the middle. Hulk number nine, love it. And, um, Danny Earls is stepping in for Nick Klein today. We've got three variant covers. I love this Nick Bradshaw Marvel 97 cover. With um, it, it's Hulk's often in a battle with himself, so it's like the Hulk look of the Hulk animated uh, uh, of the '90s, and a version of its current self with the long hair. That's nice, but we do got a Nick Klein cover, and um, it's okay. I mean, the Nick Klein art is wonderful, but you know, it's Phil Kennedy Johnson, and I'm like tuned in to him as a writer i'm also tuning into ram v more and more i hear you Dwayne moth i hear you ram <sighs> z oh, <he's... laughs> god's number five will something happen in this book gods please will something happen in this book okay good the god's trade paperback collects what does it collect um, collects one through eight. Okay, so that means there are fucking three more issues. Three more issues of this. Yeah, huh? And uh, we have Mia de, de Maria and Wynn, and these are the two characters that have been introduced into gods, and they are like, you know, magic people, and stuff happens and um hey look a variant cover <laughs> i like this variant cover this is like a 90s kind of thing well i maybe take that back i mean that's just you know maybe that that's cheesecake for an emo person yeah pretty much you know why not but this is going eight issues uh, all right sure 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 it's, it's really pretty it's 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 very you know well drawn comic the line art's great all right here we go more of this like luke skywalker is like in his in his dreams in force visions fighting people okay we were talking about this last week i mean this is charles soule right so but it, this is you know the whole thing of the hero having the dream fight and um a Sith in the mind's eye. Luke Skywalker is trapped deep behind enemy lines, hunted by a rogue Sith who sees the nascent Jedi Knight as his chance at a new ascendancy. How will Luke survive? And who will he be if he does? 28 pages for $4.99. You're getting 20 pages of, of story and art. And um, yeah, I mean... 
But look at this. I, I love these. Uh, oh, my God. It's Rick Ole. That's so funny. This is the – I love these these covers, though. I mean, I would totally be getting these if I have kind of had faith in the product and the story and I wanted, you know, I'm blessed that I can read these Star Wars comic books, but I'm, I'm, I feel even more grateful that I don't have to pay for them, you know, but this is, this is, this is my kind of cover. I love the Star Wars action figure covers. They just, they just, they, 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 they make me happy. They fill me with joy. Like Marie Kondo, I mean, you know, or is that like to 2019? You don't know who Marie Kondo is anymore? Yeah. You know who Mike Kondo, Mike Honcho is? That was me. I posed in Playgirl while you were in your coma. My, it, that year you were in junior college, I was in Playgirl. You wouldn't know me, but my name was Mike Honcho. Yeah, I showed everything. <laughs> I've been buying Star Wars magazines. You know I buy Star Wars magazines. I'm buying instead of buying this though, I am buying decent copies from the back bins. So they have to be a, hovering around a 9, you know, uh, out of the 10 points, you know, cuz I am paying you know, they could be like 9 or high 8s. I mean, these are just, you know, back issue, back bin issues, you know. Um I'm buying Marvel Star Wars though, but the ones that I would have had when I was a kid, those fulfill me as a Star Wars fan, as a comic book uh, collector, and someone who buys stuff from my local comic book shop. A lot of it is thrill of the hunt, being like, I don't have that one. Oh, how much is this? Oh, can you know, I mean, is it time to get this? <laughs> now, Wes called me crazy. I was out of my effing mind for, for, for talking about this, but... It's Teeny Howard's Nine Lives. Uh, we have a different artist. We have Carmine D. Gia, uh, Gia Dominica, Dominico. And um, uh, we have a really nice cover art here by David Nakayama. We've got, once again, cheesecake. This is cheesecake. You know, let's look up the definition of cheesecake. Cheesecake, noun, photograph, U.S., mainly U.S. old-fashioned slang. Photographs of sexually attractive young women wearing very few clothes or the women who appear in such, uh, such photographs. It's compared to beefcake. So yeah, that, okay, that's that's what that's that defines Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson's totally one hundred percent beefcake, and Selena right here is one hundred and ten percent cheesecake. Yeah, and I love the purple outfit with the black thighs, uh, thigh boots, and 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 the ear. I mean, this is this is cat. Well, this is a great Catwoman. So. I mean, this is part four of an ongoing story where Selena, after the Lazarus planet, uh, Gotham bore war, uh, thing with the, with the, with the, with the, the Vandal Savage, the immortality, the Ross Al Ghul, the Ross Al Ghul, um, Lazarus pit, everything intersects and her, her public death, but like she actually survived because of this. And now she has nine lives to spend. And there might be some kind of overseeing cat god involved. Who knows? But it's it's decent. It's decent superhero storytelling. And I, I would gladly take gruff, my friends, for, for liking this. I should be buying this. I mean, the art in the first three parts of this was um, the guy Rafale. And um, who I thought had really fine, tight line work beautiful women like you know the you know italian man draws woman i mean we've been looking at that since the renaissance haven't we <laughs> or before i mean yeah it's it sometimes it's that simple but it's catwoman 62 i've been i've been really enjoying the previous three issues of this this nine lives st uh, story so uh, let's see where this goes and how many parts does it have i mean so they, they usually solicit the the um the trade paperback Earth Zero Prime Earth. 
we have oh we have vandal savage we have scandal savage in here we've got amanda waller you know so it's like yeah so selena has nine lives and so she gets herself into higher stakes the highest stakes she can because she knows she's got a couple of one-ups but what happens when they run out and who's been giving her these extra lives is it you know the cat gods or you know <coughs> or whatnot we've got rise of the powers of 10 number two written by karen gillen now people oh, well, look at those variant covers we've got six eight now i like this this character is called rasputin four and she comes from a divergent timeline and she's um uh, she's got many she's got four main mutant traits from x-men so she's kind of like a, a, a perfect soldier and she's been handpicked by charles xavier to be his you know champion in this great war against orcas I, I think that's the gist of it and um i love the design of this character i think this was all this this was jonathan hickman and pepe Larraz like back in the day and um Let's see. Oh yeah, let's let's read a little bit of it. The last hope outside of reality, outside space and time, is Mutantum's last hope, floating between dimensions and hiding from a Dominion who wishes to crush them. Dominion is the evolution of Mister Sinister's consciousness. Um, all the different timelines he was able to he was able to steal Moira's reset mutant gift and create his own legacy of divergent timelines and become the culmination of all of them like mora is every time mora dies she's reborn and remembers her entire past lives and it just it's yeah so and it's kind of like they got this like it's i think it's called a what's it, what's it called a krakoa seed or something but it's like it's it's ripped out of dune like the dune no ship a no ship was uh, made to FTL faster than light, the ability to warp space, move around space without a, a guild, a, a guildsman with a guild net without a guild navigator. Uh, so it was technology. So it was like, you know, it was for button because, you know, the whole, <laughs> why are we talking about Dune? When aren't we talking about Dune? We're always talking about Dune. You just figured this out. Everything we've spoken in the past three years has always been about Dune. <laughs> yeah. But so, you know, Xavier and his crew are floating between dimensions in this like Cohen pod thing, which is kind of like a, a Dune no ship. And, um, and so, yeah, how is this going to end with a big reset with a big universe reset? And then, Everything goes to issue issues number one again in June this year. It all ends in May. All of this stuff. So, you know, this could be a free-for-all cash grab until then. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy number uh, annual number one, 499, landing in Kelly and um, Kev Walker. Okay. I mean, I'll read this. I'm not buying it, but... I'm like it, the, the art and it's just really good. Oh, this is going to wrap up their, um, their run on gal. Oh, and this is going to be, yeah. So it's going to Groot rise the trade paperback. This is, uh, collecting guardians of the galaxy six through 10 and the annual. So this is, you know, 144 pages, 1999 perfect bound. That's the trade paperback, okay? And so what are you paying for on a crowdfunder? How many pages are you getting? You know what I mean? How much story? So this is 144 pages of story, you know? Um, but yeah, that's the... And it wasn't that bad. And it's got the Kev Walker art in this. Just, just improves this. It could be a mediocre story or it could be pretty good. I mean, it's Landing and Kelly, who I think that, you know, maybe this is the story they're trying to write like themselves, because when they're trying to write like Warren Ellis, they bore the hell out of me. 
and they make me just miss Warren Ellis even more and question the powers that be for, for gatekeeping a talent such as him that could be selling copies. You're not in the publication industry. You're in the propaganda business, kid. We've got, uh, wow, it's a big week this week. Spider-Boy number four. Spider-Boy's been by you, Dan Slot. Slot will block Tavius, you fucking fuck. <sighs> hey, I'm getting less and less angry about that because I need to let go of my attachment in a spiritual way. Because remember, this is the dojo for tactical and practical spirituality. I mean, uh, why be holding on to anger and hate? And it's good to know that, hey, it still exists inside of you. You know what I mean? You got to do something about that. So being blocked by these better than you people for adjacency reasons, for not, for the so-called culture war. I just want to buy comic books. And this so-called culture war, I get like this, you get this weird judgments by people. And it's just, you know, I, I'm just, I just want to buy comic books, but I can't buy comic books from someone that's blocked me on Twitter. That's treated me like, a, like, uh, you know, like that, with that kind of judgment, like you're going to have your own story, but if you, you know, if, unless it's Tom King and we're talking about our directly negative, you know, interaction, that's one thing I respect Tom King. Cause he blocked me for, I gave him a rash of shit after heroes in crisis. I was so heartbroken. He turned me off to comic books for five years almost. It wasn't just him. It was the powers that be that greenlit that whole thing and authorized the publication of that. The whole machine, the whole, like, I lost faith in DC Comics. I, I you know, and this, I just, I shut down. But I came back and I, I want to thank, you know, Wes from Thinking Critical and the gang. Um, they're the ones that got me back, going back every week we have bailey briggs the spider boy designed by umberto ramos i mean i love umberto ramos you have an idea <laughs> that's interesting yeah that's an umberto ramos cover as well we we got miles morales and we got <clears throat> oh was it bernard there you go bailey briggs with the alliteration bb and um this is spider boy number four Slot's doing a decent job on this and on Superior Spider-Man as well. It's, you know, give credit when credit's due. Oh, here's something I've been looking forward to, actually. Cobra Commander number two. I hope this is on the shelf. This is one of the reasons why I have to make a pull list, because I don't want to miss Cobra Commander two. I missed Duke number two a couple of weeks ago with the new schedule change, and I don't want to miss that anymore, you know? And um, I hope I get my issue of this today. And if I don't, I'll find a way. There's a there's a there's another shop. I can just hop on the bus right now. And just get it done. And then take the other bus home. It's just, just you're only gonna add 40 minutes on to you know not getting supper. You know, you can do it. I can do it. Seriously, I'm not worried. Look at all that. We got four variant covers. This is really fun. Joshua Williamson, and he's doing a really good job over there. Um, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong, uh, issue five. Now, this is going one more issue. One more issue, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's supposed to be canonical. It's supposed to be. But everything's in continuity. Who? I mean, yeah, I mean, we've got four variant covers. Um It does not have the Dawn of DC trade dress. It's $4.99 for 40 pages. See, World's Finest does have the Dawn of DC trade dress. But and that as well is set in the past. Everything in World's and Mark Wade's World's Finest is set in a mythical, you know, several years ago kind of time frame. And it also, it sets the same time frame that Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong would have, I believe. Because it, it, this takes place like right before Clark was supposed to ask Blows to marry him, right? 
That was like the inciting incident of issue one. Let me know. You know, I, I can, I've been only paying attention so much. This Green Lantern War Journal number six. This has been pretty good. You know what I mean? In hindsight, I mean, I'm not, I'm still not too thrilled with the Montas uh, artwork. Maybe it's got more to do with the artist colorist combo about just, it's just a lot of garish colors, a lot of the use of modern purple. And you know, I've come around on modern purple as a, as you know, it's because it's everywhere in comic books, the, the modern purple. But now I see it as something healthy. I really do. Well, purple is like the, the royal color as well. So it's a, it's about luxury. And purple also has a lot of social messaging of modernity and postmodernity attached to it, especially in the past few years when it comes to advertising and marketing um, and generational stuff. But look at it holistically. It's the color blue realizing the importance of the reds and including them and working with them to make this color purple happen everywhere. So it's an allegory. So blues, they really deep down inside realize how badly they need the reds and to work with them and to include them and, be, and have some togetherness and work together and make it a royal purple world. Ain't that cool? That, see, that, that, that's, I was allowed to change my mind. I came to this synthesis on my own. I'm talking completely out of my ass because I'm just reading my show notes. I, I read down everything my, my producer writes. I'm just the talent. I swear. Uh, Hellblazer Dead in America, issue two. I mean, this was good. I'm looking forward to this. Um, it's Black Label. Um, Aaron Campbell. I still have it's written by Cy Spurrier. Uh, 499, 32 pages. It's um, it's 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 as close to as classic Constantine as we're ever going to get in the 21st century. And I'm a big fan of old Constantine. Let's see. Um, no Way Out, The Walking Dead. Walking Dead Deluxe. Walking Dead Deluxe is just Walking Dead reprints in color. Good for them. They just, you know, just sold that twice i mean i loved walking dead originally it was it, they never missed a month in over a decade <clears throat> i really like that last issue too it was really good brought it all together it was so well done and it just it was all of a sudden just like hey everyone this is the final issue like really wow they kept that under wraps too it's like hey, you know like you know kirkman and skybound I think know how to keep secrets or something because, you know, they had because the whole thing with with Energon Universe and 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 Hasbro was like everything's just like they I, I think they know how to keep secrets over there. Oh wow! Here's something I don't want to miss anymore either. Too is GI Joe, a real American hero, issue number three hundred four. We got exclusive variant covers, incentive covers, retail covers. Um, Great covers by Andy Kubert. His brother Adam did a lot of work on X-Men books in the 90s. Their father uh, was Joe Kubert, the amazing artist, especially you've known for Sergeant Rock. Um, and then there's Katie Kubert, who is, you know, their one of their daughters. Katie, what's that? Katie Kubert. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, she's adorbs too. Let's see. She's, she's the niece of Adam and Andy. So her dad's someone else, a different brother. <laughs> so, but yeah, she's a, a third generation. Comic book creator, and she's the current newly established editor of the Batman of the Batman family of books. We'll see how postmodern this gets. We rarely will. And that's a, that's a promise. If you think it's bad now, wait till you get a load of this. 
Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> Just out of straight out of Batman 89. Captain Marvel number five, a book that I'm obligated to read. Oh gosh, this is terrible. Oh, I hate myself when I read this book. Oh making this an incentive should be a more a war crime. Uh, sure. It was an incentive cover. Oh my gosh. A one in 25. You would have had to get 25 issues of this to sell one of these. <clears throat> Think about it. I mean, wow. Do we have... Oh, sorry. Fuck you, Alyssa Wong. Yeah, yeah. Right back at you, kid. And... Um, how am I supposed to, but you know, see, I, you know, I do give fair reviews though. I mean, look, you know, I'll say good things about slot stuff, about King stuff and um, even your stuff. I mean, I liked alligator Loki. I did. But keep me away from the matches. <laughs> um, Gang war, Luke Cage, number four. Three ninety nine. Oh, the Battle World stuff. Ugh. It's four in a four issue limited series, so you know there you go. Oh, Century number three. Yuck! This is just, this is some postmodern nightmare about sh power sharing and overcoming oppressors. Uh, this is just terrible stuff. I mean, I'm sorry. Century Legacy trade paperback collects centuries one through four, and it's one hundred and twelve pages. Fifteen ninety nine, perfect bound in a trade paperback. I mean, seriously, look at this and you know, compare that fairly or unfairly to what you're getting from crowdfunding. I mean, in you know, as like how many pages of story are you getting um, versus what's the what's the price? And um, yeah. Oh God! Yeah, this. I've read. The, the, yeah, I'm reading. Century is usually in my um, my Marvel pirate, my digital pirate chest. So, and the Six Fingers number one. See, this shares kind of. I believe this is like crossing over with, um, with the Ram V title that's going on as well. By two different writers, though. I'm not sure. Too busy fighting these ads. Let's see anything else? We got the Holy Roller number four from Image Comics. Uh, the Last Hunt Predator. What's that like? One of these the end books. Ed written by Ed Brisson. <clears throat> Oh boy. We've got Alien, Black, White, and Blood, number one. Kelly Lansing, Dowling, Sotomayor, Phillips, for, uh, sure, sure, sure. 40 pages, $5.99. And we got some Stephanie Phillips here in for you. We got some uh, Lans Kelly and Lansing for you. Um, who else? Well, Dev, uh, Dev Fremenek is really good at his stuff. I'll say that much. But, I mean, so it's kind of some kind of... Oh, look at that. We got four variant covers. The AHA variant cover is pretty cool. But it's... Um, and does it show the collection yet? This is going three issues or four issues to be eventually collected into... A trade paperback. Squareback finding. <laughs> <clears throat> Probably $25 or something. Because it's, you know, the, the it's these 21st, the 20th century uh imprint stuff is usually a dollar more. We've got Star Trek number 17 from IDW. And Galactic War is imminent in the penultimate issue of Arc. Three of the Eisner nominated Star Trek series. It's Eisner nominated. 
We got, yeah, Kelly and Lansing. We've got two variant covers. Um, did I read the last issue of this? Or is it the, I think I read the last issue of Star Trek Defiant. Because it's like the same thing is going on over there. It's like Worf has got the Defiant and he's got like an all star crew. He's got Ensign Rowe. He's got Balana Torres. And um, these are all from different shows, you know. So you got one from Voyager, one from Deep Space Nine. Um, and oh, there was there was somebody else too that was just like, oh, gee, really? Uh, <laughs> and so this has got Ben Cisco, and Ben Cisco has uh, got a got a different ship. Yes, Ben Cisco is back from the wormhole. Story in, ensues. Um. And this is also edited by their group editor is um, otherwise known as the Milkshake One. But yeah, Heather, her name is Heather Antos, and she edits <laughs> comic books. And uh, again, like Mark Wade, you know, to the 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 polaric opposite to the voices of of the of the sports radio wrestling kayfabe. The heels and the baby faces, and the so-called culture war. Let's see, James Bond number two by Garth Ennis. I could be tempted into that. Um, Ronan book two number six. This is the last issue. Seven dollars, thirty-two pages. Uh, I have bought every issue of this. This is an amazing comic book. It's a comic book's comic book. You have Frank Miller writing this, um, and he's also drawing breakdowns. So you have Daniel Enriquez um, going over, you know, inking his his breakdowns. And you've also had Philip Tan doing the majority of the work. So this like goes back to some, you know, the, the, the Miller art being just so finely inked. You know, this is just great because Enriquez has been inking Philip Tan's work. It's, so it's got this really beautiful continuity visually. Every page is a splash page. You open it up and it's this huge image. And then you have real lettering by John Workman. I mean, this is now everything else over on Frank Miller presents seems to be not selling. Well, Frank Miller presents is a, uh, a stable of comics, um, like ancient enemies, the genie first responder, the greater good Pandora, Wraith and Svun and Svenguli. Have you ever heard of any of these independent comic books? And would you be willing to take a chance on some like a, a new property written by some masters in the comic book trade? Um, so Frank Miller presents is just uh it's um I hope it can stick seriously, and uh, but I'm not even getting that. I know ancient and the, the ancient enemies is a, is a universe. So you have, and then you have something such as Pandora, which I think is independent of that. And then Ronin book two, which is a sequel to the DC Ronin of the early eighties of which would beguiled me as a kid. It still does as an adult. I've never, I don't own Ronin. I, di I, I didn't even like the original Ronin all that much, but gosh, if I don't, like Ronin 2. And also, I don't ask me what's going on in Ronin 2. I don't know. It's, it's, um, I buy it for the art and the support. Um, this title, you know, it's just good. This is a comic book's comic book. I'm going to go back and read the whole thing now that it's, you know, now that it's complete. We've got Zorro Man of the Dead issue number two on whatnot, uh, on massive publishing here, written and drawn by Sean Gordon Murphy. Look at all the incentive covers here. We got here. We got two miscellaneous, three miscellaneous covers. Like, let's look at this one. How much is this one? It doesn't even say. And um, I like that. Old, it's got an old movie theater, old movie look to it. Like this one too, the movie homage cover. I would love to get that. $4.99, 32 pages. And um Again, I bought the plot holes because I, su I support Sean. Sean's like a good guy. I love his stuff. Zorro, 
I'm basically doing the same thing. And it's, but have the, the have the crowdfunders got their copies yet? Is that, do, do, is there any story there? What do you know? Let me know in the comments. I'm bashful to ask online because I don't want to shame anyone. Um, oh, the sickness number four. I see that. Big. This has got to be a big week for me. It's a little big week. It's like less than 90 solicited comics, but like, oh boy, I would totally get that. That, 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 I will totally get any variant cover of this series. This is the sickness is a, a wonderfully weird, uh, you know, just cruel and, um, macabre and grotesque series and um and kind of just picking it up until it until it's complete six dollars 32 pages beautiful like pencil work that's it it's um it looks like uninked pencil work and it works for me because it's nice and simple this is real indie stuff here this is like, I, I have, what, what are some of your indie darlings? Do you have an indie darling that I don't know about that most people don't know about? You know, are, are you buying something that's just like, like I'm buying like rare flavors by, by Ram V and Felipe Andrade. Um, I'm buying the sickness. I'm buying, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm buying Zorro Man of the Dead. But that I don't know how indie is that? That's massive publishing, isn't it? You know. And here we come, full circle to the to the end of the list where we started. Indeed. Anything on the list of show topics, Pika? Anything on that list? Let's see. Talk about your pull list. Okay. Yeah. So I need to. Go really go through my monthly needs and make a make a pull list. Yeah, and agree to that. I get ten percent off the cover price, which is nice. Um, let's see, and supply ten percent off of supplies. I mean, I just spent a you know. Well, that's okay. I'm helping keeping the you know, I'm I'm giving my local comic book shop its patronage. I love my local comic book shop, and um, only we can help keep them open with our patronage. Seriously, I mean that's that's the deal. We want more. We'll go back and get more. So yeah, I've needed a lot of supplies over the past year. Um, in the past 14 months, I've been getting supplies to re like you know hit the reset button on my collection. I went through all my old long boxes and I reboxed, reboarded, and rebagged mostly at my entire collection. Now I'm at the point where I have to sort them. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna call it the great sorting, where I'm gonna go through all my comics again and do something with all those Gemini mailers I saved. I think I'm going to start selling, you know, books just because, you know, why not? And I don't think it's to make a profit. I don't know. Like, is there, you know, is there, is there money to be made? Who cares? I just like, maybe somebody wants this, you know, I just, it'll be good. It's like the whole non-attachment thing, you know, let go of some of these things. Don't give up on them. Reselling them, you know, repackaging them nice, treating them with respect, giving them a new board and a new bag and a new box. You know, that's just the best thing I could think about, about respecting my hobby and respecting my, my, my literal comic books. So, talk talk about my pull list. Okay, what's going to be on my pull list? Gosh. Um, Green Lantern. I missed that last week. Duke, Cobra Commander, Transformers, G.I. Joe, a real American hero, Superman, um, 
it's funny. No Marvel comics popped to front of mind. Um, Wolverine, Wolverine's the Sabretooth War um, is going ten parts, and it's bi-weekly. So that's that'll be five months. That's five months worth of comic books. But I don't want to be on the hook for what comes after Wolverine in the new issue one. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. See, like I, I really don't know about buying a comic book until I'm exposed to it. Like you know, I, once again, thank you for the pirate digital, the digital pirate chests full of comic books. And if they're good, if they're good enough, go back and spend the money on them. Your local comic book shop could use the business. And you deserve a funny book, don't you? You know, like, oh, you already read it though. Like, who cares? I mean, do the you know, do the right thing. Is that the right thing? Is that part of the solution? I don't know. Are we just spinning our wheels until the inevitable end? Who knows? <laughs> have fun while you're at it and have a hobby. But with my work-life balance being readjusted. I am missing opportunities to get what I want from my primary local comic book shop. I'm in the Boston area and I'm blessed to have no less and no lie than eight different comic book shops within striking distance of my own very fortress of solitude right here in Boston, our Boston studios, which is down the street from the corner and also a couple of blocks away from uh, Dunkin' Donuts, of course. <laughs> local culture. Chowder. <laughs> um, yeah, so my poll list. Oh, boy. And uh, it, it, why does it make me sad? Uh, well, uh, one part, I guess it's internal, external, and internal. I mean, last time I had um, <clears throat> a poll list. <clears throat> Um, it was at New England Comics, Harvard Square. And it was the early 2000s. I had just entered my, my, my 30s. And it was a great time to be a comic book fan. I had just gotten back into comics after a long hiatus in 2001. With uh, Grant Morrison's New X-Men. And uh, Judd Winnick at the time was running, was writing Green Lantern. And this was the, uh, the Kyle Rayner years. So my love of comic books was the spark that one of my best friends needed. Let's call him DB. And DB reignited his love of comic books as well. And he's the one he got lots of runs and lots of, you know, he was making up for a lot of the nineties that he missed the mid, you know, as well. So it was a glorious time to be a comic book fan. And then I had to move out and the band broke up. And so about, yeah, 2003, 2004, I had a pull list at new England comics for a year. But then I was put on layoff in 2005 and lost my job. And I couldn't afford it anymore. And it was where if you're going to cancel your poll list, you, just, you need to call and just cancel it and, and be, a, be an adult about it. Be a human. They're counting on you to adjust their inventories and what they order. It's no use. It's unfair for them if they're stuck with a stack of your poll that they weren't able to sell to you. And, you know, so stores have, like, lived and learned from that. Like, like part of the subscription service here at my local comic book shop. Uh, you know, just um, subscriptions must be picked up monthly. After two months of absence, your credit card will be charged and your subscription will be mailed to the address on file. But yeah, there's only so many spots for subscription. So it's like, I got to like, you know, maybe staple on a some legal pad. I have to think about this. 
can like write this out a little bit and be like, okay, there's not enough room. And my handwriting is so atrocious, you know. Um, well, thank you. No, no, I got this. My executive producers offering to do my paperwork and like his penmanship is worse than mine. I didn't, he didn't hear that. Shh, shh, shh. Thank you, Pika. I got this. But, you know, so, I mean, live and learn. So if I needed to bail from my poll, I would have, I, I would call, of course. Especially since 20 years ago, they didn't take my, my credit card number on file. And this is the live and learn. Like, this is them covering their asses. It's like, hey, mother, you ordered this. You're, we're charging you for it. You'll still get your 10% off. And uh, there you go. I mean, still, I mean, sheesh. Ain't that nice? Uh, but still, it's like, yeah, I mean, okay. Well, so it reminds me of that time I got. I don't want like, you know, want to, like, you know, start up a poll list and make it, like, you know, just because was that an expression of opulence and of privilege? You know, I got too comfortable or something. It just... Uh, Maybe I don't want the bad luck. Am I associating that? You know, like no, no, no. I don't want to endanger my job and my livelihood. I, I don't need. I don't need to, to be on a poll list. The last time that happened, ah, uh, no, I shouldn't associate the two. I shouldn't blame the poll list on that circumstance. Um, but also the internal. That's see, that was external. The internal for me, it's like a good story. The A and the B story, the internal and the external. You know, what motivates the hero in, in, in your story, your protagonist. So the internal one, I guess, for the for the poll list has got to be it just the lack of the will, uh, uh, of, of, of finding it, of discovering it. And <clears throat> the sheer obligatory nature of it. I don't like pull lists because they make me feel so obligated that I don't have a choice. You do have a choice. You can just, you just bag out. You just talk to the, you know, you cancel your subscription and it gets canceled. You know what I mean? Within the parameters that you have agreed to, you know, um, and, um, Because like yeah, I mean, just I just I feel like it just it takes a, a measure of fun out of it by making it it's just making things so perfunctory, so rote, you know. So so and and, and it it, be, it becomes a literal obligation, and that for me, I mean, like. That's not part of my love of this, of my joie de vivre and my verve when it comes to extolling the, you know, the loves of my hobby, this hobby of ours, this thing of ours. And for me, part of it is like, you know, maybe it is, you know, knowing that if I don't get it here, I can just hop on the bus, go to the other, my, your secondary store. Or go to the other second, you know, your tertiary store. And you know that those two places, which are very, you know, an easy striking distance, a literal bus ride away from, from steps away from my front door. You know, it's no pain. But they have, they have variant covers, the ones that you're looking for. If you go off the beaten path, you know, and uh, it's not like I'm totally... A variant cover hound. No, no, I am. Um, I just, you know, I'm a sucker for a good one. I really am. Like a cheesecake variant and, um, or a peach momoko variant, you know, just, uh, yeah. So you can't blame the house for selling out. They're just trying to order, you know. I, I like as I said, I spoke to the um, to the owner months ago. It's like 
they cover they, they cover their pull lists and they only get a few for the shelves when it comes to new releases. They don't want to get stuck with unsellable copy. I mean, they have an inventory enough as this there that they're trying to, to, you know, to rotate and to, and to sell. I mean, to, to, to apply their to apply their trade, to, to apply their wares, you know. And the last thing you need is to have your shelves clogged up with like, you know, hey, look, you got the six issues of the last issue of Spider Amazing Spider-Man. They didn't sell. Well, we have to order less. It's a live and learn. They've lived and they've learned. They made it through lockdown 2020. And they're on this other side now. You know, we're almost five years away. We we're, were we're four years away from that right now. Do you remember curbside pickup? I remember like, you know, social distancing and all that. I mean, the validities of such actions. Hey, we were scared. I'm sorry. We thought we did. We thought what was right. I know. I know. I mean, it's hard to compete with like, you know, with fear and people and huh? But that happened. And I'm so blessed and grateful that my, my local comic book shop had made it. And I was part of that solution because I kept buying comic books. You know, some some of my, uh, I, I'm still missing, I think I'm still missing Kill Lock Volume 1, issue number 4. Because of like, Kill Lock happened, it was happening, and then lockdown happened. Like, right about issue 3 of Kill Lock. And um, <laughs> this is an image title that's it's really good um and then there was pencils down and then it's the world stopped and i was on furlough for most of the rest of the year I, yeah i did it was interesting and uh but you know my local comic book store stayed open and there was you know there was rules to follow you know and uh but still, I mean, it was during like you know my my, my post heroes in crisis exile self exile too. So I really didn't come back to being a weekly warrior until like you know tw early twenty twenty three, I guess, I mean, late twenty twenty two, something like that. When Wes started having me on the show. I was the bemused, uh, lapsed fan. And they were like, no, why aren't you buying this? Why aren't you buying that? And you know what? It was nice to get back to my local comic book shop every week. Because that's, that's my hobby. I love our hobby. I do too. Thank you so very much for spending some time with us. It's the new release re preview day. Uh, it's new comic book day. So what are you getting? What are you putting down? Did you pick up? Batman, Superman, World's Finest 24? Or are you, you know, sheesh. I mean, it's hard to, you know, can we separate the art from the artist? Have they blocked you on Twitter? I mean, I got my own standards for that stuff, so you never know. Thank you so very much. You've also reached the dojo for tactical and practical spirituality. Here we do gratitude lists and we gain purpose that way. Uh, it's about reformatting your self-talk, being a friend to yourself. Seriously, when you're nicer to yourself, you're usually nicer to other people. When you're fair to yourself, when, when when you show respect to yourself, you usually show fairness and respect to other people. It usually that's how it happens. And you can change your self-talk into into stop being a nagging force or fighting with with, with the ghosts uh, and 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 imaginary constructs of the people in your life, whether they're enemies or loved ones or anyone in between in that grand spectrum of humanity. Reformat your self-talk. I get this from the Bhagavad Gita, uh, where the self is your best friend and the self can be your greatest enemy. And you need to conquer yourself in order to, you know, achieve moksha, spiritual enlightenment, freedom, spiritual freedom, you know, and, um, Thank you so very much for tuning in. Um, anything else today? We were gonna, did we talk about X-Men 97 some more? We we're going to do that. Um, we can do that on Sunday, I guess. There's, well, there's not much to talk about. I mean, it's just 
you know, just p other people are talking about it. So, I mean, I've said my piece. I said, you know, the big thing was the morph thing. And you can check that out from Sunday's broadcast, from Sunday's uh, replay. You want to talk about the morph problem? Or is there a problem? Or the illusion of having a problem? Or the, in this so-called culture war? Well, leave a comment there and check it out. I'm going to actually clip that and publish that on uh, as a post and on uh, on X Twitter, um, you know. So you you know maybe you can, if you want to skip over the reviews, um, you're more than welcome to. But we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please think about liking and subscribing. We make content here about comic books, about cooking, about spirituality, and we try to keep it positive. Because, you know, the world's a dark place. Light it up and lead the way. You know what I mean? With your energy and your intents. Intents. Like, you know, your intents. No, no, we're not talking about camping. I mean, and we're, and we're not talking about being a smoldering thing. I mean, intent. Plural. The plural of intent. Intents. See? Homophones. You know, things that... <laughs> Thank you so very much. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. We will see you again in those funny pages. Come by Sunday, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern for the live stream of the of everything that we bought today. See what we bought today? And check out my reviews of everything I read that was new this week. Usually DC and Marvel funny books. Thank you so very much. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.